Welcome back to the channel, guys. You guys know we're getting ready to go take this beast right here out for a test and tune at the local event, which is a diesel truck show. But you know what? We're going to show them boys how you do a real burnout. So we got some work to do, but I'll touch base on that after the intro. So first things first, the agenda for this video is going to be first, death trap. So what we need to do here is we gotta get all the injectors put back into the motor. We'll make sure that we're good on oil, we'll fire it up, and hopefully this thing should be ready to rock and roll. The only thing is, is the rear tires on here, which are the factory Mustang wheels from my car. Uh, the center hub I don't believe is big enough. Jason said they're not quite on the axle, so we need to find something to put on the back. Otherwise, good to go. Actually, I'm gonna flip the battery charger on here. This. Uh, Sweet excess power system. We'll get this charged up to make sure the battery is good to go. Top it off with methanol and, like I said, fire it up, make sure we're good. Now, over to burning green. So, you guys know we had that issue at Milwaukee where the truck would just shut off. And we put a new crank sensor in there. We haven't tested it. Obviously, that's the purpose of why we're going, is to test this out. Now, in talks with the Holly guy, in regards to the Dodge truck here, computers and harnesses and sensors, it was recommended to me to buy OE equipment sensors. So we did put the new one in there from Advanced, um, just a standard ignition part. It is not OE. So Jason's going to the local Chevy dealer. He's picking up a crank and cam sensor. And then I have AC Delco, assuming they're not just some knockoff with a box of AC Delco oil pressure sensors. So we're gonna change all those out before the test and tune. So that way, hopefully we rule anything out. I don't wanna get there and have to drop starter and do all that crap to get the crank sensor in there. So we're gonna do that. And then the major project is going to be that rear end. I'm not gonna lie, I am not, I am not 110% sure that the pan hard bar is actually bent. I just believe it is, and that's what's pulling the rear end over and you know getting the shocks leaning off one way. So we'll get the four wheeler pulled out, burning green, We'll figure out a way that we're going to get this beast off the hoist. I did get the jack out of the back and the body is sitting down the frame. So hopefully just a jack with a board across frame rails. Drag that out, pull this back in, get it on the hoist, start checking some stuff over. And then we should be good to go. But first things first, I'll set up the camera. We'll get over to the death trap, put injectors in and try and stay inside the cool shop because it's a blistery 94, 95 degrees outside and heat index of like, I don't know ball sweat drip and I don't know it's like 105 degrees so all right the AC is pumping it's a house unit for like thousand square foot so we'll stay as close as we can to that let's get some injectors in As you've seen there, the first step is done, which is 16 injectors back in. If you guys are new to the channel or haven't seen this before, this is just something I dreamt up in my head, this lower block that, you know, bolts onto the blower out of just a billet aluminum piece. Had my brother machine it, and you know, the first time programming, I didn't do too bad. You know, you can see kind of choppy on the corners, but you know what, it works. So what we have is Moran 550 cc inject, 550 pound injector, excuse me way bigger than 550 cc 550 pounds and 160 pound per hour uh, those are billet atomizers there and the morans are the big ones so big injectors 550s feed every individual runner and the 160 billet atomizers all spray up into the blower including at the very back back there and that's what keeps our teflon stripped blower nice and cool so this thing you know we don't run a whole lot up top but it's enough just to coat it and i think we're like 75 25 uh, percentage mixture when we're actually on it so you know where the camaro that thing will frost the entire blower up the hat coming up the back of it and everything but that's because everything is getting injected all on top of the blower you need a little bit just to coat it 
push it on through, then we want to be able to individually tune every cylinder. So that's what we like there with our EGTs down here. So thank you for Steve again helping us hook up with that. And always thanks to uh, Mike over at Moran. He uh, also went through the injectors for the Camaro. I just called over there. Again, flowed them, got them checked out for free for us. So thank you to them for that. If you guys need anything, call over to Moran Motorsports or Moran Racing Engines. You can Google either way. Um, check them out. They've got all the injectors and everything. They build motors. They dyno them. They do it all. So, all right. Well, I think uh, we'll probably start it up and then we'll move on to this piece. I'm gonna wait till Jason gets here so we can help move all this stuff out quick because the old uh, house AC thing propped up here is going up and up and up. We're up to 79. Still better than the 93, I think it is outside right now. But all right, let's keep moving, guys. All right, Jason showed up over here and his idea instead of moving everything around was to just jack it up and crawl underneath. Yeah, you're always jacking stuff up. Oh. Yeah, that is three quarter? Yeah. All right, so let me get you guys a good view here. So we're underneath the truck and, well, we don't have it down in the jack stands, I guess, but I don't think the shocks are gonna travel that much. Long story short, looking at the pan hard bar, I can't really give you guys a straight view, so I grabbed the square here. It does not look bent. How are you gonna hold that up there? Very carefully. There's nothing. Yeah, it's, so it's not that then. I mean, there's nothing of it. It would have to be crowned pretty good to be able to put the shocks like it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a little off. I don't know if, I don't know if this is off, though, but... It could have been off a little bit to begin with, but... Exactly. So I think what we're going to do for now is probably just take the jam nuts loose and lengthen it out until the rear end looks halfway centered, because... Oh, let me back up. I'll show you. How do you know how much threads are in, engaged in Yeah, this? I know. Well, mine doesn't really look that off now. Is this, yours? Oh yeah, this one's off. Oh, well. This I'm just, well, yeah. What's that look like? See it? I can see. So yeah, you can see the shocks are... Jason's looks worse than this one, but... I don't know. We'll see how much threads are left in that adjuster there. Hopefully a few. Adjust it and see if we can make it uh, work again. Mm -hmm. That'll save us some time. Uh, grab them. Well, Jason's under there comparing to a brand new Heim to make sure that we're still engaged enough, but... Let's see. Hold it up there. Oh yeah, plenty. It's in there quite. What do we go out? Maybe a three sixteenths to maybe a quarter inch. So not really sure why, but again, the bar looks. Let me zoom out there, but the bar looks like it's true. Doesn't look bent like I thought it was. But I don't know. Jason says his shock looks straight up and down. This shock looks pretty good. And honestly, we measured from the four link bracket to the outside of the frame out here, and they're both four and a quarter exactly. But that's judging that all this four-link bracket on the rear end is put in the right place, and we know the guy who did that. That's the guy talking behind the camera, so it may not be right either. But we're going to call that good. So throw this shit out then, and we'll go up front to the other problems. All right, so now up front, I told Jason a 2004 Chevy truck. I told you to send me a message. Blaming it on me now. This is memories poor. Think about other things, probably. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, I knew as soon as I seen this that this is not the right sensor. It should have been black. This is tan in my opinion, but they, they call them gray and black. Long story short, this is for the different reluctor wheel. This is for a 2006 and newer. So crank sensor, we're going to go with the one that I said was probably the cheap one. We'll probably, you going to put this cam sensor in or are we just going to run what's in there now? That's an easy change. Run what's in there. We'll run what's in there and then I'll grab an oil pressure. We'll switch that out at least and then... I think we're ready to go with this one. We can, uh, I think it fired up or anything, are we tonight? Fire in the morning at six o'clock, wake the neighbors up. Yep. Well, they already, they already love me anyways. And then we may want to start up death trap just real quick when we're done for the night. 
That way we can make sure we don't have any leaky injectors. And that can be fixed tonight instead of tomorrow in the morning. So otherwise I think we're gonna we're gonna call it good. All right, well while Jason's changing the oil pressure sensor, if he can find the socket, I'm gonna go ahead and shout out to Holly once again. I don't know if I showed these or not already, but we have the MSD ignition coils. These are the blasters. Got them in red so that way they stand out behind that motor plate. But yeah, obviously eight of them here for the LS and this will help us out with burning all that methanol. So we're gonna go ahead and get these switched out as well. Wasn't completely needed, but it was on the want list. And we got them, didn't we, Nate? Show them that shirt. There's a few left on the website. Turn around from the backside. So if you want to get yourself one of those, or Nate, here, show them mine. Okay. Move your finger. So we got this one, Boosted Ride, with burning green on the back, which is the rig we're working on today. So what are they looking at? My big belly in the camera no. or what? No, it's a engine truck. All right, let's go ahead and get the time lapse going. We'll get all these switched out. Chewy, look at that. Mm, look good back there. Mm -hmm. Nice red ones to stick out, so that way you know you got that nice MSD. I mean, black's always cool too, but you want to let them know you got the MSDs, not no stock coils on there. So, Jason got the passenger side, as you've seen. I went ahead and whipped out the driver's side. Did you plug all yours in? Yeah. The right order? Carl and I already know when we started that day, it doesn't work if they're plugged in the wrong order, so. So that's all done. Like I said, Jason's gonna bring a socket in the morning for that, and then maybe we'll see if, at the local dealership, if they did have the correct one on hand. They had to order something in for Jason, don't know which one it was, but we'll find out. So this one should be good to go. All right, well, Jason and I came back out after stuffing our faces, eating some of Noah's birthday cake. Thanks, Noah. And let's set the tripod up here. <laughs> We thought it was a perfect time because it's uh, got a pretty big storm brewing outside and it went from like 90 something degrees. What do you think it is out there? Perfect temp, I think. 69, I was gonna say about 69 degrees out there right now. So good time to start the truck up, that way it can air out. Um, so yeah, the back two on this side, the Morans are the ones with the odd O-rings on them. These two on top. Yep. Otherwise the rest are original. I'm not saying that they're not gonna leak. All right, take two. At least three leaking injectors, Jason said. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Mm -hmm. 